So context, uh, we learn everything in a context. And the context can be multidimensional. It can be a social context. It can be uh, <clears throat> the environmental context, uh, body state, drug state, mood state. All these things are contextual cues. They sort of govern how you encode things. I mean, you see a word like B-O-W, and you're in a gift shop versus on an ocean liner, you're going to interpret B-O-W quite differently. And that's a kind of extreme example, but in general, context situational context is going to influence how information is encoded. Um, for one reason, it will influence what's recallable from your prior learning. And new learning happens by mapping it onto and fitting it into what you already know. So what's accessible from your prior learning is going to govern how new information is encoded. So context is, is quite important. Now if you're trying to optimize learning, um, do you want to try to simulate the context that you'll later be tested in? Um, this is, of course is widely believed in uh, not just educational settings but that's in some degree what military exercises are about, or coaches will, will uh, pipe in loud crowd noises during practice just to try to simulate what they expect people to encounter. So that's all related to this notion of, uh, of transfer and transfer appropriate processing. You should learn under the conditions that you expect to be tested in to some degree. Um, but some research suggests that maybe you should even go beyond that. Maybe you should vary, if you're studying something several times, we found years ago that studying something in two different places on the University of Michigan campus would enhance recall in a third place versus studying it twice in the same place. That's interesting incidentally because standard advice to students in pamphlets they can pick up on a campus or study skill centers is find some one good place and do all your studying in that place. But that could contextualize learning. Uh, it, it may be good advice incidentally from another standpoint of getting yourself to study. Maybe this place hidden away in the library, when you sit down there you just get to work. And maybe if that's your problem, getting down to work, then maybe that's important. But if, if you, that's not your problem, you're more than willing to study and learn, <clears throat> then it may be that mixing it up, uh, studying in the coffee shop, studying the library, uh, may give you more contextual cues. We've all had this experience where on an exam, and it's, oh, I was just studying that a couple nights ago. Let's see, I was sitting there, and we kind of mentally imagine ourselves back where we were studying. Oh, I know, and, and that can somehow help reinstate or get access back to that. And one of the notions why contextual variability might happen is now I could imagine more than one place. Or let's say I do every, all the studying for all my courses right in this one place hidden away in the library. One kind of notion is I might sort of overload those cues all the things I'm learning are in that same kind of environmental setting. So um, context is important. Uh, some results suggest that I should vary the context. Um, other results suggest I should reinstate it. Now as far as reinstating a context, um, that I, namely that I will recall better if I have the same cues setting that I had where I studied. Those results are very surprisingly inconsistent. Um, experiments have done that find those results and overall if you do a kind of a meta-analysis of all the studies it's pretty convincing there is such an effect. 
But often we don't find that effect. And my own interpretation of that is that mental reinstatement is almost as good as physical reinstatement. Sort of, as I mentioned, thinking back, oh yes, I was sitting there, we were at, and, and not just study material, but something like, let's say, I was just talking with that about somebody, well, you, let's see, we were at the, uh, we were at this, we were at the such and such restaurant, and then I mentally put myself back there. Well, their research, uh, a lot of it carried out by uh, Stephen Smith, who did much of the uh, critical work on environmental context, showing that under a lot of circumstances, mental reinstatement is as good as physical reinstatement. So if you're in a different context being tested and you can mentally reinstate the study context, you'll be about as good as if you're put back there. So that can make it hard experimentally. But I, that's why I think these context effects, if you go back to something like a class reunion 20 years later, and you haven't been back to this town where you went to school and back with those friends, you will be overwhelmed by memories that you haven't thought about for a long time. Expressions you used to use with your high school friends will come back. Memories of uh, crushes and relationships and games, uh, memories of the building, they all come kind of flooding back. That's one reason that reunions get pretty dramatic from a memory standpoint. But in that situation, you think about it, your ability to mentally reinstate all those things 20 years later is going to be limited. Now when you're physically back there, even things like smells, when you're back in some shop where you went as a kid and bought pastries or something, can trigger those memories. So I think these, uh, under a lot of circumstances, Contextual reinstatement can be, real world things can be very, very powerful. But on a much shorter time frame where we might have the ability to kind of mentally think back, I don't think we're going to see those. And there's almost no limit in the real world thing. Uh, people who were immigrants to this country, including my own mother, who hadn't been back to Norway in, I think it was in her case, like, 55 years. At that point, you don't think you know the language, you don't think you remember anything. It's often overwhelming for them to be back in this context where the language, the setting, the scenes will bring back a lot. Uh, I mean, World War II veterans go back to Omaha Beach and places like that, and memories, good and bad, just come flooding back. So. I think these things are very, very powerful on the very long term and in real world environments. Whether when you're talking about intervals in hours and days, uh, that it's something to, then, then I think a lot of the effects can be just offset because uh, we can remember those situations imaginally.